Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 157, getting close to Halloween. I hope you've got your costumes together. I don't, but, you know, I have little kids, so I go behind them. Anyway, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't here with us right here, right now. Our agenda today is going to be a little different because we don't actually have anything to triage. Uh, we have some things left over, but we're still investigating those, but nothing new. So we don't have to do triage, so I thought I'd take this moment to come around instead and talk about the Wix4 repository organization. Um, you might remember in previous conversations, it's been the repository reorganization, the idea of how we might change it. Uh, we've been operating with this for a few months now. Uh, things are starting to come together, starting to get kind of the hang of how it works. Um, so I want to give you an overview of at least a, a, a bunch of the repositories to see how they work. It's not going to be perfectly exactly correct, but it's going to be, certainly should be enough that anybody that wants to jump in and see how we're doing this micro repo thing uh, how it's working for us. And then, as always, we'll take uh, questions and comments at the end. This is my one slide for today. Uh, this is the name of a bunch of different repositories you can now see in the Wix toolset GitHub uh, area, uh, organization, organization it is. Um, and inside all of this is code that used to be all housed within the Wix 3 repository or the Wix4 repository, and we've been pulling code out of the Wix4 repository and breaking it in these smaller parts um, that allow us to focus our work in one particular repository, and then the hope is that the repositories higher in the levels don't change as much, because what we found over time in Wix3 was that these things didn't change, therefore we wouldn't have to keep rebuilding them, which allows us to have smaller units that we operate on regularly. So I'll uh, talk about how that lays out within the actual organization here. So you can enlist in any of these repositories today. The one that's special is the one on the top left that's home. There isn't actually any code per se, no Wix code in that one. Um, we're going to slowly add that one to have our uh, a nice readme that talks uh, how to get enlisted in all these things. It also kind of has the prototypical uh, pieces of things that show up in all repositories plus a few batch files that help you do work across all repositories. For example, the home repository has a all.cmd uh, batch file that you can say all and then put a set of command lines and that uh, whatever that command lines you or arguments you put after it will be commands that are executed in all the repositories that you're enlisted in. So if you say all get status, it will show you the status in each of your repositories. Um, and so on and so forth. The other interesting thing about the all batch file is that it does it in the order that follows the flow of these arrows. So you can know that if you have a dependency where this has to come after, come before this, that comes before this, come before this, the all batch file will do that for you. Similarly, we have a build all and a clean all uh, batch files in there that do what you might expect. It will build all the repositories you're in and clean all the repositories that you might be in. So it's a handy way of just kind of uh, micro repros make it an, you know a little more difficult if you have to go into each repository to do work in them. It's these build all, these all command files can help. Um, in the source folder you'll see a prototypical directories.build.property directory build.props I think is the name of it. Anyway, it's the build.props that all projects start with, so it's kind of our standard, hey, this is our the name of all the NuGet packages we build, here's how we lay out our stuff, a bunch of standard stuff that then gets, will get copied to all projects. So that's home's purpose, is to contain those batch files to help you do operations across everything, and also to have a couple uh, prototypical build stuff. That's more for us, less for what people just want to get started. Oh, and I forgot arguably the most important batch file in there is called enlist.cmd and in that you could say enlist and then give it one of these names up here and it will automatically bring that repository and uh, put it into your uh, bring it local clone it and then add it to a solution file in the root so that you'll have one solution that can include all these projects that enlist is not quite perfect it works well for projects that have C sharp stuff in it it does not automatically add native code projects to your solution. So um, in this case, when you're doing an enlist into something that's native code like Deutil, you'll have to manually go and add the Deutil uh, projects to this, sol this solution file that's get created in the root 
of your repository if you want to do that. There's more details on how to get enlisted in the home readme if you want to kind of get started. But that's kind of the place to go start and look if you want to get into this. Next, let's drill into some of the code in the places. I'm going to start in the left column because that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have this very useful library that wraps up lots of Win32 APIs for us all around doing deployment type stuff. Uh, that's what we call dutil. It's been built up over the years and is mostly stable. We add things to it every once in a while, um, but in general, it's a very useful utility. Um, it is our goal that out of dutil, we will build a NuGet package and publish that to NuGet.org so you can reuse dutil in any of your native code projects um, straight from NuGet. So that's another one of these things that I'm going to talk about is a number of these repositories are designed to produce a NuGet package, sometimes just for internal usage, but sometimes for public usage so that people can reuse the functionality out of just that repository. And dutil is a perfect example of something way high in the tree that's useful across all kinds of native projects, and so you'll just be able to grab the util out of that. In the past, you kind of had to install a lot of Wix and then reference the util, which worked, but then you had to install Wix. If you just wanted the util, the NuGet patch would be nice. Similarly, WCA util is our wrappers that build on the util that then wrap MSI APIs for writing custom actions. So they have a lot of custom action specific stuff in them. So just like the util, it's another native library. C++ code that we will publish as a NuGet package, and you'll be able to use just in your custom actions um, as you want. And you will no longer have to install all of Wix. You'll be able to get all of NuGet. And this is the pattern that you're going to see in Wix 4. We're kind of trying to embrace the new world of smaller packages uh, published on the NuGet that people then can share and reuse. And then we use those to build up the Wix toolset itself. All right. At the bottom is star.wix extension. Um, that's there is a separate repository for each of the Wix extensions that we publish. So you'll see one for Firewall, uh, you'll see one for uh, NetFX and Visual Studio, and we haven't done all of them, we haven't pulled all of them out of Wix 4, we have kind of a sampling of the ones, uh, Util being one of the more important ones. And again, those are uh, extensions that we want to pull out in separate repositories because we find that they don't change at the same rate as the Wix toolset. Um, so if you just want to be able, we want to make it such that you could go and just fix a bug in the Wix extension, and then we can publish that again. We're thinking to NuGet if all that works. We haven't verified it end to end, but it looks like it should work. We'll be able to publish the Wix extension up to NuGet, and so we'll be able to have those have fixes and move along independent of the core tool set. So we can just make those things move forward as they go along, as they have fixes on whatever rate they are. They'll no longer be tied to a gigantic, huge, big Wix release. All right, so going back now to the other side, underneath home, is DTF. Uh, DTF is the Deployment Tools Framework, part of Wix toolset. It's been there for a long time. Lots of people like to use this thing because it's a managed code wrapper around the MSI APIs and lots of um, other good managed code uh, stuff related to deployment. So that has been broken out into its own repository, just like the util and it will be published as its own NuGet package as well. So I know there are a lot of people that have been asking us to do this for a long time. It's just taking us a while to reorganize our world, to extract it, bring it out, and it will sit outside, and it, it too will then be able to release as it gets bug fixes and things like that. So that'll be DTF um, on the left. So it too is standalone. So you have the native code on the far right, and you have DTF on the left. So in the middle is what we typically refer to as the core tool set. Um, these pieces were hidden within the Wix 4 repo, uh, or the Wix 3 pro repo for that matter, with everything else. Now it'll be a little clearer to see things. Now we've taken the core tool set because it is, you know, the bulk of the Wix tool set's purpose, and we've broken it down into a few parts to help uh, make Wix more um, approachable as a platform to build more things on top of it. You could do these in the past, but again, they were hidden away within the core of the Wix tool set, and it was hard to find all this stuff. So we're trying to make it a little easier and a little clearer how to pull these things out. So at the top, we've pulled what we call Wix toolset.data. And the data assembly has, as you imagine, it has only data. It has very, very little functionality in it. Um, and it has all the things like the tuples, a lot of the row definitions and things like that, the definitions of the data that the Wix toolset operates on. So as you can imagine, for the core toolset, everything depends on data. 
Um, even the uh, extensions will depend on data. And I don't have a dr straight line from data because it goes to extensibility, and then we'll talk about that. So I'll talk about extensibility in the end. But data is really, really nice because you can also do things like, hey, let me open up a PDB and introspect on it. You won't need all the Wix toolset like you did in the past. You'll be able to take just the Wix toolset dot data assembly, and you'll be able to open PDBs um, and things like that. Can't do really any operations on the PDB, but you can open it, read it, and introspect on it, which is a uh, really, really, really cool fun, um, ability going forward. Now, the and next that's an one, example of code that does live in data. Yeah, you mentioned before that it was mostly just data, but it, it, there's actually quite a bit of code around the the various formats that Wix can produce. Yeah, and Wix toolset.data, we've tried to minimize it such that the code in there is related only to loading and uh, at the very lowest level enough to get that the data you know represented, loaded, and into memory, essentially. And we try to keep that assembly tight, small, because if it changes, everything down from there changes. And that's one thing I'm going to talk about more at the end. But the higher you move in the stack, the more things that you affect as you go down, which was also true when we had it in one gigantic macro repo, repo but uh, it was harder to see that and a lot easier to make breaking changes. So data being pulled out the top has all of the data in it. The extensibility assembly, um, is where data contains all these concrete objects that are mostly thin wrappers around, you know, properties and the layout of the data with a little bit of code to do loading and I think saving. Extensibility is almost entirely interfaces. It is the interfaces to all things of the Wix toolset. We call it extensibility because it's the place where Wix extensions have all of their extensibility points. It also has all the helpers. If you've written extension in the past, you probably see compiler core or decompiler core. Those aren't objects anymore. They're now represented through interfaces, smaller interfaces, but interfaces that are defined extensibility. So if you're writing an extension, you now just take a dependency on the extensibility assembly and by uh, proxy the data assembly, and you now can write your Wix extension without having to take all the core tool set, the compiler and the linker and all that stuff. You don't reference any of that. You just reference straight to a bunch of uh, um, interfaces. And the code in there is mostly around small helper classes that so that if you can inherit from a base class that implements the interface. So there's like a, a base compiler extension um, class in there that's abstract that you can implement and then override certain methods if you don't want to uh, pull straight from the I compiler extension, have to implement everything, you can reference this base class and then implement override only the parts that you care about for your Wix extension. I don't think there's much other code in there. If there is, we're probably trying to get it out of there and either get the data objects into data or get the code into core um, and exposed by an interface. So with data and extensibility, you'll be able to uh, extend and read all the output of the core tool set without needing the core tool set. And both of those repositories produce one assembly, and that each of those assemblies will be, um, sorry, data pro provides one assembly, extensibility provides one assembly. Each of those assemblies will be published to NuGet. So as a if you want to build an extension, you'll just be able to take a reference on the extensibility NuGet package. It will have a reference to the data extensibility or the data you get package, and now you can write your custom action or your, your um, custom extension. Um, you probably have a custom action in it. If you have a custom action, you can then also depend on WC Adel, and you can see how those two arrows from extensibility WC Adel into our extensions are the only two dependencies you need, and you don't need the bulk of the core tool set referenced down here in the bottom left that I'm going to talk about next. So again, it's trying to create these smaller NuGet packages that represent reusable, useful sets of functionality, and also when we get to extensibility and data, interfaces to the core tool set that we are doing everything we can to do all the breaking changes now so that there'll be no breaking changes in the future uh, so that it, you can write an extension once, build against these, and then we can rev that core, and as long as there's no breaking changes along these interfaces, everything will be clean. This is true in the past with Wix before we tried to maintain it, but because it was all glommed together, it was a little less clear. Now, by having these separate repositories, when we make a change to extensibility, we can immediately see, oh, if you made this change, how many things break down in core or change in core from that? And we can think about the breaking changes that would also impact on extensions and uh, so on and so forth. 
All right, so that leads us to, honestly, the core tool set. Um, uh, the core native thing on the right, uh, I will talk about really quickly, it depends on DUtil, and it essentially wraps up all of the native code that the Wix tool set has always had. We've always had a few things that were easier to write in native code than they were to p-invoke to or things like that. And so core native is a small assembly that wraps, believe it or not, an executable. We've decided to do all of the native work out of proc now. Um, so like cab building with a lot of the complications that we do in there with smart cabbing stuff is now an executable. And Wix core native then produces the Wix toolset.core.native assembly that is a very small wrapper around calling that XE to do various pieces of work for us at the native layer. Um, that doesn't change hardly at all. In the past, you may have seen this in the Wix toolset as the winterop.dll. Um, we've moved it now to Wix native.exe. Um, and I'm really hopeful we pull that out because that was the only native part of the core toolset. So you'll be able to work purely in managed code in the core toolset now, depending on core native. And we don't change core native hardly at all now that it exists. So that's an example of where we've been able to wrap up a block of functionality in the Wix toolset, put it in a repository, and not have to touch it again, maybe for, well, for a very long time, potentially. Um, this is also an example. Uh, core native is the first example of a repository that produces a NuGet package, actually a couple of NuGet packages right now, um, that it then sends over to the core repository through a private repository, through a private uh, NuGet feed. Core native is not a thing that we that people should be taking dependency on. It's not an API. It's not for external use. Honestly, it's not useful in that way. It's designed for what the core tool set needs. And so that's an example where that repository produces a NuGet that shares into the core repository. The reason we share it via NuGet is that that way you don't have to build that project. You can just enlist in the core repository, none of these other repositories, and all the rest of them will come to you as NuGet packages. And that's true for any of these, although enlisting just in extensibility and making changes in there without being enlisted in a lot of other things is probably not a good idea, although possible. So with core native and the native code pulled out of the core toolset, core, in the very important name, has pure managed code and has all of the stuff that you think of as the Wix toolset tools. The compiler, the decompiler, all the stuff about uh, building bundles and building MSI packages and all that stuff. And of course, it uses lots of everything else around it. It's why pretty much all the other arrows flow into it, except for the stuff related to custom action extensions. Um, all of that flows into it. The core also has the implementation for the extensibility interfaces that are available that are not implemented by an extension. And that sounds a little confusing, but in extensibility, you will see a area of extensibility services. There's a set of interfaces that are provided by the Wix tool set to your extension to do heavy lifting around parsing and all error, sending error messages, all that kind of stuff. I talk about that core object. Those are implemented in core. You implement like iCompile extension, which is in the root extensibility. Your compiler extension then can use things in extensibility.services that is inside that. Again, extensibility has very, very little code in it. So the implementation for those assemblies is in core. And if that's confusing, you don't have to worry about most of it unless you get into core and you want to start seeing how we load and talk to um, extensions. So the core is where the bulk of the work of what you think of the Wix tool set does. When we go down to the tools repository, the tools repository is very, very small and thin. And what it has today is the um, MS build and the Wix.exe uh, wrappers, command line wrappers, or MS build interface to that then use the core assembly and do all the work. So Wix.exe, you know, Wix.exe build, that command, the Wix.exe is built in tools and it then, it's a very small thin layer around pulling code out of, or using code that's in core. Similarly, MS build is a very small DLL that parses those or takes those inputs from MS build as you do for your task and then calls into core. So you can imagine we've tried to make the code and the tools as small as possible, specialized for the difference between a command line and MS build kind of interactions um, and then calling into, uh, and then the rest of the work lives inside core. And that's the way that we're gonna keep uh, doing that. 
the last thing about tools is that it's kind of the end of the road here at this time because Core, like Core Native, produces a uh, private NuGet package that we that we do not expect other people to use. It has just internal workings designed for the use in tools. Tools then produces NuGet packages that will be published up to NuGet.org, uh, where you'll be able to pull down the Wix.exe as a global .NET tool, or to bring down the MS Build tools as a NuGet package into your um, MS Build project. And so, tools is kind of the the as you mentioned the end of the road for the core tool set and how they get published out as NuGet packages. Um, so the things at the so I should have highlighted these, but the let's see, is my mouse going to show up? So tools, DTF all the Wix extensions, WCUtil, DUtil, data, extensibility. So all these guys kind of on the edges here are all published as new, will all be published as NuGet packages to uh, NuGet.org for your use in all those, you know, in the various different ways. And as you can see then when you make a change to like core, then we have to go into tools, update them to rebuild them. They run all the integration tests and then they will eventually publish all that stuff up to NuGet.org. All right, so you'll notice, those of you that are looking really closely will have noticed, like, uh, where is burn? It's probably one of the first questions. Uh, I know this is one of the questions that Sean keeps asking. Um, uh, burn's not on this list yet. We haven't extracted it out of Wix 4 and brought it in. Burn is probably going to get its own repository because it's big enough. It certainly is big enough. Um, and, but it has a few things that are interfaces, so we haven't quite worked out the details of how Burn gets built and shared, but it's probably going to be something similar like Core Native and then maybe a little bit like Extensibility, and we're going to have to you know, tease out a couple of those parts given that uh, Burn publishes some interfaces that obviously could be used for building your bootstrap application and so on and so forth. So we haven't quite decided where it's going to come out, but that will then turn into another one of these orange boxes when we get to the point at which we're bringing Burn in. We've done these because we feel that this set is uh, representative of a lot of the problems that we would have trying to put micro uh, repositories in as a process. Um, and also, it gets us working code at the end. You can build, if you enlist in tools and build it, you can get a Wix.exe or an MS build, uh, Wix toolset. Uh, Wix toolset build task .dll or whatever it's called. Forget Wix toolset tools build task. I forget the name of the actual assembly. Um, but you'll get a bunch of targets that you can use today to build various parts of Wix. You can't build a burn bundle because burn's missing from this. But you can build MSIs and MSMs, Wix libs, things like that. So we're making our way through a lot of functionality, bringing it over from Wix four. I think burn is the big question or the big missing orange block on here from all these orange blocks. But honestly, I started getting lines crossed, so this was complicated enough um, for a flat power sh PowerPoint <laughs> graph diagram. All right, so there's a whirlwind tour through the repositories. You can jump in any one of these and build. Um, and so you can jump in like just the core repository and build. Um, there's still a couple tricks sometimes. If you hit problems, send mail to Wix devs and we'll sort you out. We're slowly refining this process, this micro repo process. A lot of this has been a learning experience to kind of see um, how far can the micro repo uh, process go. We've seen other people kind of doing this. Um, in fact, the .NET Core team went to this really small repo and then they actually came back from it to a, a uh, a larger macro repo. So uh, there are pros and cons to each side. We want to kind of get the experience of trying what the how it worked out for the Wix tool set. Um, and there's always this, you know, <laughs> I feel like a little bit like a guillotine hanging over the head that if it all falls over and does not work and we cannot keep this working, that we would go back to a macro repo like the Wix 4 repository. But so far, things are working well. And as data and extensibility stabilize, the UDL, WCUDL stabilize, it is really nice to be able to enlist in just core, do work there, um, and have things generally work really well. So that's been, um, it's been kind of, it's been actually really cool um, to be able to work on a smaller block of code, a focused, a smaller focused block of code when you need to work on just a particular set of um, bugs or features that you're looking at. All right, so there we go. We're going to leave this recording up and for posterity for anybody that wants to come back and get a, a quick overview of the Wix 4 repository as of October, uh, uh, end of October. So burn hopefully comes in the not, 
in the next couple months is my my dream if everything goes well and this you know set of boxes will get one bigger i am thinking about ways of getting this picture or at least these set of drawings into the readme for the home repo to give you kind of an overview of oh here's a pictorial graph of how everything flows um and so we will i will look at doing that in the future as well especially as we get to a more final set of all the repos everywhere all right Bob, Sean, anything you guys want to interject at this point before I go to questions? Well, I was tempted to wait for questions and then pop my hand up, but sure. Uh, two things that I think are worth, uh, well, I think are worth having you expound on. Um, one is .NET Core, our use of it, and two is uh, you mentioned Wix.exe, and that might be confusing to people who've never seen it before. All right, so um, we have... Uh, Get the drunk the .NET Core Kool Aid. I guess is probably the way to say it. Pretty uh, every all right. So let's see. DTF is still a still targets .NET Framework 2.0 because we don't want to break people there. And honestly, we're not changing the code significantly, so it will work as 2.0 code. It can stay as .NET Framework 2.0 code. Um, Dutil, WCutil, and Core Native are all native code, so they're just C++ that continues to work against. Wix, Win XP, I think, but that might change. Bob, have we? I don't know if we've changed that yet. Um, I don't think we have. Uh, yeah. my, last year, sometime, I I posted um, that question to my blog, and I got very very little feedback. I would love to actually dump it um, as yeah. a general thing. We we haven't we haven't talked about the build requirements, which are generally just Visual Studio 2017. Yep. Um, but you have to choose the right workloads depending on the repo that you're in uh, to, to be able to cover native code if it's in one of those repos. Uh, .NET Framework in general, .NET Desktop, I think they call the workload, and then .NET Core. Um, but it's like you don't necessarily need the .NET Core workload, which I think is mostly focused around ASP.NET Core. Um, you can add .NET Core to .NET Desktop development. Right, but DUtil, WCutil target Windows XP SP2 currently. We may change that because that's really old, but also it works. So maybe we'll, I, we'll, we'll, right now it still targets Win XP SP2, and we may cut that and move to just supported um, operating systems of Windows. But anyway, so those are native code. Nothing too special about that. The rest of it is um, managed code, so data extensibility, core, and tools. Um, and those are all, uh, like I said, we've drunk the .NET Core Kool-Aid. So data and extensibility are just assembly, and core are just assemblies, and they are .NET standard assemblies, um, .NET standard 2 assemblies, if I remember correctly. Um, and that means that as a .NET standard assembly, they can run on either .NET Core or on .NET Framework um, code. All right, great. So that means that by choosing .NET Standard, we have not chosen for you whether you're writing .NET Core or uh, .NET Framework code. You can choose either of those using these um, using these core assemblies. Now, when you get down to tools, we're actually building an XE or something that runs, and that's where we choose. So we have two tools that come out today. Well, we have three if you count Wixcop, uh, but I'm going to leave Wixcop just off to the side. We'll talk about Wixcop in another day. Um, but you have two primary tools that come out of the end. One is our MS Build integration, and the other is Wix.exe. You notice I said there are only two tools. Those people out there that have been complaining about that there's Candle and Light and Dark and Pyro and Torch and all these other kinds of tools, all those tools are being subsumed into Wix.exe. So we're also kind of moving to the XE command pattern that if you've just been using Git, you're very familiar with of, you know, Git status, well, Git is kind of the thing that does everything, and then there's the command status that does what it does. So Wix.exe is that for the Wix tool set from the command line. So now you can say Wix.exe build, give it your source code, and it will build the thing that you're supposed to build from you. There's no more candle and then light. Um, it's just Wix.exe build. All right, so Wix.exe is a .NET Core application. So if you want to run it, uh, it, it is shipped as a global tool, which means you can go, if you haven't used .NET Core, a lot of this is going to be foreign to you. If you have, hopefully this is like 
very natural and maybe you're a little excited about it, but you can say .NET, I forget, tools, install, and then .NET dash Wix or whatever the name of our NuGet is. Um, I think it's that. Uh, and it will bring that tool down and it will run within the .NET Core framework. That means you need to have .NET Core on your machine to run Wix.exe. Um, if you're using MS Build, which is really what most people are using the Wix toolset as, MS Build still requires a .NET Framework code. It is still .NET Framework. So the MS Build tasks DLL is a .NET Framework assembly that can get loaded by MS Build, and we provide the targets with that uh, tasks DLL, and it loads core and all that kind of stuff. And goes through the standard MS build, your Wix proj, and all that kind of stuff. So that path hasn't changed behind the scenes, uh, hasn't changed from your point of view. The only difference is now that when you call MS build and then you load the Wix task.dll, the MS build task for Wix, then it loads a .NET standard DLL, where in the past it was all .NET framework, now it's a .NET standard. So Wix.exe is .NET core, the MS build is still .NET framework, and everything should work from there. Now, one of the opportunities this opens up for us, and we had some people talking about helping us do this. I haven't heard from them lately, but also I haven't pinged them lately because we're only starting to get to the point where they could come back and help. .NET Core is cross-platform, and that means that the Wix.exe that we produce and Core and Extensibility and Data, all of them should work just fine on uh, on uh, Mac and Linux because .NET Core can run on Mac and Linux. Dot, notice Core Native is native code, which has only been built for Windows. So it would not run on, win, on Mac or Linux because it has Windows code in it. But we've had people offer to, and have apparently done in the past, writ, rewritten WinterOp.dll to uh, Core They had WinterOp.dll, which is our Core Native of the past, they have written it for Linux. So, and they've done complicated things to get Wix running on Linux to build MSIs on Linux machines. By us moving the .NET Core, if they could come back and help us get the core native native part written in Linux again, which they should have that code because it's basically WinterUp DLL again, if we get that, then we should be able to build a Wix.exe that you can use on Linux to build MSIs on a Linux machine. Now, that's not a core scenario for us on the core team, certainly not from a fire giant point of view, but they were excited enough and we were looking at this that we think that with very little work, well, with their work to provide whatever it takes to build on Linux, uh, plus the work that we've done here, that it should all work cross-platform and there are a number of people that were really excited about that. So by choosing .NET Core for Wix.exe, we've opened up that ability uh, going forward. Um, I don't know about MS Build or things like that. If MS Build works on Linux, because I know MS Build is looking at going across plat or, or, or Mac for that matter, then we can look at if people contribute the native parts of the core native, then we'll be able to go from there. So uh, that's a, an interesting opportunity for us by being .NET Core and uh, by, by, being, by picking .NET Core for Wix.exe and then making everything else uh, .NET Standard so it works both on .NET Core and .NET Framework. And we also do support MS Build from .NET Core. And we do support MS Build from .NET Core, correct. Correct. Did I get both of your questions in that? Yeah, they kind of dovetailed. Yeah, they, they fit together there. So we're, Wix 4 is hopefully going to open a lot more doors. It's, it's essentially formalizing a lot of it. The transition from Wix 2 to Wix 3 formalized our extensibility model a lot but didn't break out cleanly delineating our interfaces. It was, it was still kind of all a ball. Well, from Wix 3 to Wix 4, we're trying to clearly delineate a lot of our places, at, at the interfaces between the Wix tool set and what you can access and what's private. And then also, as by picking up on some of the, the newer technology, we also have opened up this door that with some help in the core native, we can even go cross-plat for those people that are excited about that. Um, again, by cleaning up our interfaces and making everything nice and clean, and then the .NET Core doing the heavy lifting of being able to take us cross-plat. So I know, it's, it's kind of cool when it all works together. Cool. Anything else? Because my next slide is just questions, things that people want to talk about. 
I don't have anything. All right, cool. 10.30. It's a good stopping point. Start a little late getting everything put together, but here we go. All right, so there you go. There's a high level of the Wix4 repository organization. We're still doing a lot of work inside Core. Um, as I mentioned, Burn's still missing, so there's still a lot of work to do there. But we're making progress, and um, I, I'm at some point we're going to pull the trigger and start publishing some of these to NuGet.org. It's just when you do that, you end up with, I don't know, a certain level of a, you know, you've shipped to a certain degree, so we're... I haven't quite got the level of confidence in where we're at yet to publish anything yet, but we're working our way to that point. When you start seeing these things show up in NuGet.org, you know that we're finally getting closest to previews and like, you know, yes, it is starting, it is truly working end to end, and then we need help flushing out all the little bugs that we missed in the large move from Wix 3 to Wix 4. So, uh, future things to look forward to. Uh, so until then, we'll be back in two weeks, I expect. Should just be a normal week in November. And uh, we'll talk about, well, triage if we have it. If not, then we'll have another topic that we'll talk about. Until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Go vote. Bye.